The American Cancer Society ranks colorectal cancer as the third most common cancer diagnosis in the U.S. Screenings not only help prevent the disease, but detect it early. Arnett Health's Dr. Cliff Snellgrove explains when you should start talking to your provider about screenings. Since we've seen a, a slight increase in, in the incidence of colon cancer in patients under the age of 50, 45 is the average age that we ask, unless the patient has uh, a family member with a history of colon cancer. If someone has a first degree relative, meaning a parent or sibling who was diagnosed with colon cancer under the age of 45. And generally you would want to at least make sure they've been screened uh, 10 years before their diagnosis. And Dr. Snellgrove covers the various types of tests available to patients. The non-invasive types of colon cancer screening include uh, stool cards um, where, the, where a fecal sample is used for it to detect blood, um, uh, a FIT test, which is similar, but it looks for specific antibodies that are found in blood. Um, and then there's the uh, DNA test, uh, which is in the U.S. is called the uh, Cologuard test. More invasive testing. Which would include colonoscopy, flexible, uh, flexible sigmoidoscopy, um, and tests of that nature. With more movement, reach, and high-quality cameras, Dr. Eric Rayborn says the equipment used during these procedures don't carry as much risk as older technology from the 20th century. So the original colonoscopies and flexible sigmoidoscopies and upper endoscopies were all done with stiff scopes that were not flexible. So um, the intergenerational changes in the actual scopes themselves over the last five to six decades has been pretty incredible. Weighing the pros and cons of all options, Arnott's providers make one thing clear. The gold standard is a colonoscopy because it's a direct visualization of the colon. Uh, because any of the other tests, the non-invasive tests, if they're positive, then they have to get a colonoscopy anyways. Patients may then schedule an exam with someone like Dr. Michael Kocek. We go through medication lists and talk with the patient beforehand, make sure that they don't have any new questions that have arisen or any new complaints or concerns that have arisen. And then with the procedure, we um, use sedation, um, dependent upon the patient preference. The screening process is relatively quick. And then the procedure itself generally takes about 35 minutes to 45 minutes. Well under anesthesia, your physician will look for any signs of colon cancer. We're hoping to find polyps, which are precancerous growths that develop throughout the colon. Um, so as a part of our examination, when we're looking for those, if we do find them, we try to remove those because that can essentially prevent the development of that polyp uh, into a cancer. If a polyp is too large or a gastroenterologist finds cancer, patients may then be referred to a colorectal surgeon, like Dr. Gohan Azuner. The treatment options, first of all, they're very, um, they differ according to the stage of the tumor and also whether this is colon cancer or rectal cancer. Doctors will refer patients to radiology to get a better look at the tumor's shape, size, and location. We do a, a CT of the abdomen and a CT of the chest. That's the minimal imaging we do, meaning we want to make sure there's no spread of the disease, at least that we can detect. If the disease hasn't metastasized, spread to another part of the body. Patients usually go straight to surgery, so that's the best and preferred option. In the case of rectal cancer? If the tumor is a little bit more advanced, even though there's no metastatic disease, uh, we uh, evaluate the patient for chemotherapy and radiation. That usually shrinks the tumor and sometimes the tumor disappears. According to Dr. Ozuner, if someone with rectal cancer has a bulky tumor, they will still require surgery after chemotherapy and radiation. Rectal cancer is a little bit different in that sense. If someone undergoes colon or rectal surgery, we evaluate the final pathology and then reevaluate the patient to see if they need any further treatment for, uh, in regards to chemotherapy or any anything else. A tumor board, a team consisting of an oncologist, pathologist, radiation therapist, radiologist, and colorectal surgeon will decide if chemotherapy and radiation is appropriate for the type of cancer a person has and when to move forward with surgery. Based on the recommendation of the multidisciplinary tumor board, we proceed with the plan of treatment. When someone is diagnosed with colorectal cancer, it's natural for them to want to address the disease right away. And providers like Dr. Gokhan Azuner say they do too, but going through the whole imaging process he mentioned earlier is important to providing the proper treatment. Reporting in Elmira for Arnett Health, I'm Lexi Cutmore.